This is a controversy coming out of Washington, D.C., where some citizens are surprised by a new bill. It's being pushed in the city that hopes to fight crime in a new way by paying potential criminals a stipend of up to $9,000 not to commit crimes. And there does actually seem to be a little bit more to it than the initial headline. That's why we have the D.C. councilman behind the bill, Kenya McDuffie, joining us on the phone. So, Kenya, thanks so much for being with us. Can you describe a little bit about what this bill is about so that folks can understand uh, your, your reasoning behind it? Sure, absolutely. So, so this bill is taking a very innovative and comprehensive approach to addressing violent crime uh, in the District of Columbia, and it's doing it by focusing on prevention. It's doing it by focusing on uh, violence, which in some neighborhoods in the district is systemic. And so the way that you address these systemic issues is by taking a more comprehensive approach. It's going to establish an Office of Neighborhood Safety and Engagement. It's going to establish an Office of Violence Prevention and Health Equity, really focusing on uh, the need and the research over years that shows that violence is a public health problem that can uh, best be prevented by identifying and addressing the root causes of crime, as opposed to uh, what's been done uh, for years in urban communities is just trying to address the symptoms. And so we're taking this comprehensive approach, establishing these two offices, but also recognizing the intersection of uh, mental health issues in crime uh, by establishing well, the community Kenyon, crime prevention Kenyon, team pilot. You, Kenyon, you know, what I really want to focus on, what really makes me smile and makes me feel good about this bill is that what you're doing is you're, you're giving an incentive program, it sounds like. Almost like, you know, I, I live in Chicago and we have, you know, our, our minority population has like a 60 percent unemployment rate. So if it, studies show time after time if there's poverty, if there's no jobs, then there's going to be crime. And it almost sounds like you guys are kind of training a little bit, giving people resources. And if they, they go through this program, then they get $9,000, which is just a fraction of what it costs to incarcerate somebody. Absolutely, that... absolutely. So, so the program is based on a successful program based out of Richmond, California, uh, which since, in that jurisdiction, since 2007, has seen a 76% reduction in firearm-related homicides. And so uh, we want to wow. focus on that program and, and bring that to the District of Columbia, where they're spending approximately $9,000 per year uh, to use stipends uh, which, quite frankly, pales in comparison to the cost of someone being victimized, in addition to the cost Kenyon. of incarcerating people. Kenyon, yes. I, I have a question for you. Why do you think the program, given how wonderful it sounds and the successful model in Richmond, why do you think it's getting so much pushback? Why, why are people upset about it? Because it's a little unconventional. Uh, I think the way that it's being, it's being mm -hmm. framed in, in some media outlets is it's essentially being reduced to a soundbite where we're saying, uh, that we're paying criminals not to commit crimes, which in fact is not what we're doing. This program is much more uh, comprehensive. And, and people uh, who see the program and the bill for all that it is really appreciate uh, the innovation that's related to this program. That's awesome. I have to say, I have to say this sounds innovative. It sounds like it could be much more effective than the way things are currently being done. I, I applaud you all for absolutely being innovative, and we wish you the best of success with it. Kenya, I appreciate thanks so much it. for joining us. Thank you. I, I do love it when people think outside the box. Yeah, I think it's got a bad that. rap, though, because you just hear paying the criminals. But when you get to hear the fuller explanation mm -hmm. in all of the programs and how they're intervening before someone gets involved in the criminal justice system, that's, for me, what really well, gave me yeah. a sense that this is a good thing and maybe more communities can start to do this and maybe we can really start to impact some of that crime we see in Chicago, L.A., mm -hmm. Detroit, and urban cities really across the country. I mean, the money's going into education rehabilitation. Rotation. That's what it sounds like. But that's not what's being reported, unfortunately. Just the sexy headlines, paying criminals $9,000. But 30, it's really 000, much more 30, than that. 30000 a year to house a criminal in, in, the, in the system yeah. versus $9,000 stipend when you finish the program to not become a and, criminal. And the, program. And the resources and are there. The non-economic cost of the victim of the crime, yes. which is something you can't put a number on, and, and that's and when, ultimately and the And when you look at the of numbers all. of how the prison system fails, yes, uh, the, the recidivism, the exactly. people go in and out, the, just back and forth, and, you, and clearly that doesn't stopping work. someone before they get in the system is key. Ariva. Before you Always say goodbye to her, I, I sleep better at night because I have your calling card on my bed stand. <laughs> I, want you to I know that if I now. get in trouble, well, she knows, she goes, what is that? What's who, who is how she dresses, I want you to give the card to you. Don't get me in trouble. <laughs> oh, boy. Ariva, thank you so much. Thanks, Ariva.